Regatwelfs, my name is Kade Mazokere. I'm the author and publisher of the Distinction Bound Student Textbooks. And um, I'm still driving from home, but soon I'll be with you. Okay, now I'm taking the bus. Then we drive around the city like we did yesterday. And so what we're going to cover today is sort of an extension of what we did yesterday. Yesterday, we looked at the classification of markets where we looked at the 12 criteria in which um, markets are classified. And I'll quickly re recap those 12. Um, but yeah, let me just wait for you to come in and uh, then we can get on. Hey, it's raining, I see. Um, at least you have an umbrella, so come in. Then we can start with our lesson. Uh, I can do the recap uh, as, as you settle down. Okay, so yesterday we looked at the 12 criteria in which markets are classified. We say the first one is number of firms where we have many, few, or one as options. The next one is nature of product where products can either be homogeneous, heterogeneous, or unique. The next one is entry and entry is either blocked restricted or free the next one is control over price a firm is either a price maker or a price taker the next one is information we said information is either complete or incomplete uh, after information we talked about the demand curve we said we have four differences number one we have a horizontal demand curve number two we have a kinked demand curve Number three, we have a downward sloping demand curve, which is elastic. And number four, we have a downward sloping demand curve, which is inelastic. Okay. Then from there, we looked at um, the type of profit made by a firm in the long run. Okay. Because in the short run, uh, firms can make normal profit, economic loss, economic profit. But in the long run, there is a market structure that can only there are two market structures that can make normal profit because of entry and there are also two market structures which can make economic profit and also because of entry you'll find out that where entry is free uh normal profit becomes you know the 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 thing that the firms make and when entry is either restricted or blocked you'll find out that firms will be able to make uh, economic profit in the long run the next one was decision making we say decision making firms can either uh, uh, their decisions can either affect other firms in that industry or it doesn't next is collusion we said only one market structure uh, collusion is possible with the other ones, you'll see that because there are many firms, it becomes impossible for firms to collude. Then uh, we have productive efficiency. Some market structures can achieve it, some cannot. Same with allocative efficiency. And then lastly, uh, you need to have examples. So today I'm gonna look at perfectly competitive market. So this is more like characteristics of a perfect market um, and I'll do it in like five minutes. Okay or less right um with this i'll start with an example so the example i always give is like think about um maize farmer think about an apple farmer think about all those agricultural products you realize that uh many firms or many farmers are farming these fruits these vegetables and um the market price for tomatoes the market price for apples is determined by forces of demand and supply and people who are, or firms that are selling these become price takers because the price is is determined by forces of demand and supply so anyone who's uh, willing to be a participant in this market will have to be a price taker because everyone else is selling at this price in that particular market so that's a perfectly competitive market then so think about maize think about apples think about gold the price of gold is determined by forces of demand and supply right the next one will be number of firms right so we're looking at all the criteria and then we're looking at 
what it is that applies to a perfect market so in a perfect market we say examples maize like that then a uh, number of firms how many farmers do we have in south africa you'll see that we have many what is the nature of product for let's say an apple is an apple unique as an if if you are given apples from different farmers can you taste and say this is from mr matlangu this is from mr jones this is from can you distinguish the taste you'll see that apples are homogeneous you won't be able to tell uh, for a fact that this came from this particular farmer so the product the apple is homogeneous it's not unique it's not differentiated it's different from uh, let's say you see what these people are wearing they are all wearing different clothes and there are many manufacturers of clothes but they don't make them the same so these are differentiated products you can clearly see that this is nike this is adidas this is whatever okay then the next one is entry if you want to sell apples you can do it anytime you want so entry is free then we move on to control over price if you want to sell apples you become a price taker you don't uh, determine the price because people have perfect information that's the next one information is complete so others or, or consumers can tell that you are being expensive the next one is the demand curve the demand curve in a perfect market is horizontal then we have economic profit because entry is free the the perfect competitor will not be able to make economic profit so they'll make normal profit in the long run the next one is decision making if you make a decision as an apple farmer uh, on let's say because you cannot decide on the price but if you decide not to farm this year that will not affect other farmers or other firms because there are way too many you are just a drop in the ocean so decision making by one firm does not affect others the next one is collusion farmers cannot collude because there are way too many so it becomes impossible so we say collusion is impossible then um the next is allocative and productive efficiency yes perfect competitors can achieve both productive and allocative efficiency all right uh and then the last one will be um okay examples we covered examples all right so we're done for today i'll see you tomorrow okay so you can see right now i'm driving home and uh it's 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 late you can see but thank you so much for the uh for 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 coming with me today uh, i really appreciate uh please subscribe like and share my videos to others uh you can make suggestions on what you think i should be doing thank you god bless